Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and like and subscribe for cooler entrances next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Trunks from Dragon Ball Z, a dude from the future with a big sword and all the regular Z Fighter flying laser stuff. Does that extra flavor make this more complicated and worse as a build? Weirdly, no. Trust me, I just came back in time from the end of the video. Turns out pretty well. I'm, I'm hailed! This was a particularly bad case of somebody being cut in half. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to get a weapon. Turns out that the Z Fighters could have been much more effective if they just armed themselves instead of using their arms. Next, we need lasers, some super hot stuff that shoots out of our hands to microwave the baddies. Finally, what's a Saiyan that isn't super? We need to shout for bigger powers. Just don't let your dad know if you end up being more powerful than him, he gets a little insecure. For stats, we'll be using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure you've got all kinds of muscles. Set your strength, dexterity, and intelligence to 14. We finally get to be speedy strong person with a brain isn't that lovely constitution can hang out at 13 i'd like it to be higher but it's not the end of the world uh, it actually might be if you don't stop the androids leave your wisdom at nine and your charisma at eight you're not bad at those things we just need everything else more and we'll neutralize them with our racial bonuses those are coming from protector asimar of course you're only a half saiyan but since you get all angry and glowy there's very little difference between you and someone from planet dad you get plus two charisma and plus one wisdom 60 feet of dark vision the light cantrip for Krillin and his bad human eyes, celestial resistance to resist radiant and necrotic damage. Honestly, considering how many Z Fighters have this, maybe Key Blast shouldn't be dealing radiant damage. I'll put a pin in that for now. All Asimar get healing hands to restore an amount of HP equal to your total level as an action, so you can get a Sensu Bean even if your dad won't give you beans. God, remember Bean Dad? That was this year. We need to go back in time to stop Bean Dad from bogarting those beans. Build your own background for Arcana and History Proficiency, call it the Marty McFly background so you can go back in time. We'll kick things off as a fighter, even if we don't want to stay here for long. We just want athletics and acrobatic skills, and proficiency with weapons and armor. You can actually get the most out of half plate with your current dexterity score, so that would be perfect for some Saiyan armor. As fast as your sword goes, there's nothing stopping you from using a greatsword, I just think that a longsword is more accurate, dealing 1d8 slashing damage one-handed or 1d10 two-handed. That being said, should we take the great weapon master fighting style? We should if we're power building, but we need to punch stuff good too, so we'll use unarmed fighting, letting you make your unarmed attacks deal 1d6 plus your strength modifier and budgeting damage, or 1d8 if you have two free hands. It basically turns your fists into versatile weapons. You also get to deal 1d4 damage to a creature you have grappled once per round, so a little pummeling is definitely an option. Finally, you get Second Wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest for another little Sensu Bean. You've got so many good beans. We'll bounce over to Wizard now. The reason we didn't start as a Wizard is for some better opening hit die and more armor proficiencies. It's just nice to have an option to pop some heavy stuff on later. You get spells and cantrips. Firebolt fires a range spell attack that deals 1d10 fire damage. I know we typically call it radiant damage, but today it's going to be fire, at least for a little bit. You might be noticing some similarities with this and the Frieza video. They were on the same pole, and then this one got brought back in a redemption pole. That happens sometimes. Don't worry, we're about to diverge a little bit. Create Bonfire is an AoE of fire damage, dealing 1d8 fire damage to creatures in a 5-foot cube that fail a dexterity saving throw if you're trying to roast someone in heavy armor. Blade Ward gives you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical weapons. Everyone in Dragon Ball Z land is pretty much invincible. This isn't that, but it's better than nothing. For your first level spells, we can't grab anything too kaboomy just yet, so let's get some standard physical buffs like jump to triple your jump distance, long strider to add 10 feet to your movement speed, expeditious retreat to dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes, and feather fall to prevent up to 5 falling creatures from taking falling damage as a reaction. If it wasn't clear, this Z fighter ain't gonna be a monk at any point, so if we want that monk mobility, we gotta get it from our spells. Shield to see at 5 to your AC as a reaction, the defensive duelist feat would be the most literal way to block with your sword, but this is effectively the same thing, just flavor it different. Finally, Thunder Wave forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15-foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage and pushing them back 10 feet if they fail, half damage if they succeed, and no pushing. The Saiyans are so strong they can clap their hands and blow up mountains, surely you could make a little shockwave. Wizards also get Arcane Recovery, letting you recover spell slots equal to half your wizard level on a short rest, no hyperbolic time chamber required. Second level wizards can choose a school, and chronogists can manipulate time, so if you need to go back in time to save your dad, this is the best bet. Your temporal awareness lets you add your intelligence modifier to your initiative, you show up to battle knowing exactly when the battle starts, that's gotta be helpful. You also get chronal shift, letting you force a creature to reroll an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, and use the second result. If you or a friend roll poorly, use that future knowledge to let them try again. If your enemy rolls well, make them try again until they do worse. You have two of these per long rest, so try not to waste them. By the way, if you end your day without using them, 
them, that's just as wasteful as using them on something silly. For this level spell, Gift of Alacrity gives a creature a d8 they can add to their initiative rolls for eight hours. No concentration required, just say, hey Piccolo, go beat up the ginger android in 20 minutes, that should get him prepared. Earth Tremor forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, dealing 1d6 bludgeoning damage to those that fail and knocking them prone. It also turns the area into difficult terrain if you want to jump so hard their ground breaks. Since this is total level three for you, you also get Radiant Soul as a protector Asimar. That'll give you a flying speed, let you add your total level and radiant damage to one attack per round. Fire Bolt can be that attack, so see, it was a radiant attack all around, you just didn't know it yet. Your first Super Saiyan form lasts for a minute, no concentration required. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Scorching Rain lets you throw three energy balls to deal 2d6 fire damage each, hitting one or multiple targets. I'm thinking Android 16, Android 17, and Yamcha, he knows what he did. Fortune's Favor gives an ally a d20 they can use to reroll an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, or give an enemy disadvantage on attack rolls against them for an hour. Again, hey, Goku, they're gonna kill you. Don't let them do that. Pretty simple time travel stuff. You're not really concerned with paradoxes. Four level wizards get an ability score improvement. We'll start with strength. Since hitting 16 will let you use the heaviest armor without penalty, that Saiyan armor shakes the ground when it drops. They're not exactly yoga pants. For this level spell, enhance ability gives a creature advantage on ability checks of a certain type. Strength doubles their carrying capacity, dexterity stops them from taking falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less, and constitution gives them 2d6 temporary HP. Last for an hour, depending on your concentration, I think strength is your best option considering it's probably the closest you can come to Super Saiyan levels of lifting. Magic weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon for an hour, but it also makes it magical in terms of overcoming resistances, so you can turn Frieza into eight slices of pizza. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Fly gives a creature a 60 foot flying speed for a minute. If you run out of your Asimar stuff, this can help you get airborne. But if you still have your Asimar stuff up, I recommend haste instead. It's my favorite spell. This will add two to your AC, double your movement speed, give you advantage on dexterity saving throws, and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, use an object, or make one more attack. Last for a minute, depending on your concentration, and when it ends, you need to take a round off of actions and reactions, probably just standing in place and screaming until your power levels come back. Sixth level chronogists get momentary stasis, forcing a constitution saving throw on a creature of large or smaller, suspending them in time and making them incapacitated until the end of your next turn or until they take damage. It might not seem like it's in character, but it's basically the same thing as stunning strike for monk, just a little bit worse. You have an amount of these equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. For this level spell, fireball forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as so much to those that succeed if you just want to drop a big old blaster bomb. Melf's Minute Meteors lets you mix the fire damage into your punch game a little bit better. Creating six floating meteors that hover around you, you can send them out as a bonus action on your turns, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a five foot radius and dealing 2d6 fire damage to those that fail. They last for a minute depending on your concentration, so it's really Melf's Minute Minute Meteors. And with Protector Asimar, you can add radiant damage, so it's Melf's Minute Minute Meteor Meteors. 7th level wizards can learn 4th level spells. Stone skin gives a creature resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for an hour depending on your concentration. It's pretty much auto blade ward if you think the androids are going to punch you a bunch. Protection from energy lets you give a creature resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage for an hour if you think they're more likely to roast or freeze you. These spells kind of go hand in hand, but energy only requires a 3rd level slot. 8th level wizards get another ability score improvement. Let's bump your intelligence modifier so your lasers can be more accurate. We'll try to keep this on par with your strength, sort of jumping back and forth between them like you jump and forth between timelines. We'll grab a couple more third level spells at this point. Counter spell shuts down spells of third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spell's level for the ultimate beam deflection technique. Blink lets you blink in and out of the material plane, rolling a d20 at the end of your turns. On an 11 or higher, you spend your turn in the border ethereal plane so nobody can hit you. Dragon Ball Z fighters are so fast, you kind of just blip in and out of existence a lot. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells. Legend lore lets you put your future knowledge to work. Name something of legendary renown and you get more information on it. The more you already know, the more you learn. So hey, DMs, give up your goodies. They used a fifth level spell slot and you have lore you wanna share. Don't be stingy. Steel Wind Strike lets you instantly blast through a bunch of baddies, hitting five creatures within 30 feet of you with a melee spell attack that deals 60, 10 force damage. You move your sword so fast, they didn't even see it pop out of the sheath. Nothing personnel, Frieza. 10th level chronogists get Arcane Abeyance, letting you store a spell of fourth level or lower in a capsule for someone else to cast with your intelligence modifier sometime in the next hour. That's Fortune's Favor to go, or a little haste capsule. Any of your fourth level spells get creative. For this level spell, Skill Empowerment lets you give a creature expertise in a skill they're proficient with, doubling their proficiency bonus for an hour so you can turn your athletics up to 11 or just get really good at history before dropping Legend Lore. 
augury from the second level lets you know how an event will go in the next half hour. If your DM says wheel, it will be good. If they say whoa, it will be bad. If they say both, it will be both. If they say neither, it's neither. Obviously help your pals, but don't give away any plot spoilers. 11 level wizards can learn 6th level spells. Tensor's transformation is good. I'm not going to pretend it isn't because someone on Reddit told you it isn't. It gives you 50 temporary HP, 2 attacks per round with your action, advantage on those attacks if they use weapons, and an extra 2d12 force damage to those attacks regardless of whether or not they use weapons. You can't cast spells while it's up, but why would you when you can chop people in Super Saiyan 2 mode? You do have to make a DC 15 constitution saving throw when it's done or take a level of exhaustion, but by then it should be someone else's turn to fight Cell. If you want to keep up casting spells while you're in badass mode, Tasha's Otherworldly Guys is a fine option since you're an otherworldly guy. It gives you a 40 foot flying speed plus 2 AC, an extra attack with your action, you can use your intelligence modifier for attack and damage rolls, and you're immune to either fire and poison damage or radiant and necrotic damage as well as the poisoned condition or charmed condition. Lasts for a minute depending on your concentration if you'd rather play a little more defensively. 12th level wizards get another ability score improvement, let's get our strength up higher before jumping back over to fighter. Oh, also grab sunbeam first, it forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot line, dealing 68 radiant damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed, they're also blinded until the start of your next turn, lasts for a minute depending on concentration, if you don't feel like fighting up close and would rather just spam some projectiles. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. Use this to mix in lasers with slashes, or just get a bunch of slashes when you're using Tensor's Transformation. Action surge with Tensor's Transformation is absolutely bonkers. Third level fighters get to choose a martial archetype and will be choosing champion for improved critical, letting you critically hit on a 19 or a 20. With tensors, that's advantage on every attack roll and a 10% chance to crit. A critical hit would also double your 2d12 force damage. You'd also go Eldritch Knight for a few more spell slots, but really, you wouldn't get that many more. You just get one extra 7th level slot and no 7th level spell to use it with. Big crit from Super Saiyan is going to be a lot more fun for me. Fourth level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off your strength. I know I said we would try and keep them even, and we will. We won't invest any more into strength because we literally can't. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action instead of one. This doesn't stack with tensors. It's just a way to make sure that even when you're not rocking giant 80s blonde hair, you can still fight pretty well. Or to give you a melee attack option you can use while casting other spells. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement, start working on that intelligence so you can microwave people a little bit better. Seventh level champions get remarkable athlete, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to any strength, dexterity, or constitution check you're not proficient with, which includes initiative rolls, so you'll get even more future jump on everyone you fight. Speaking of jumping, you can also add your strength modifier to the distance of a running long jump. You have three different methods of flight though, you don't really need this. Our capstone is the 8th level of fighter for one last ability score improvement, cap off your intelligence modifier so you're just as good at shooting as you are at fighting. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is, and we'll do it comparing it to other Z fighters. First, Tensor's Transformation, Radiant Soul, Action Surge, and Improved Critical are so good together, letting you deal 4d10 plus 8d12 plus 40 damage in a single round, with roughly a 1 in 5 chance to crit, which would add another d10 and 2d12 force damage. Before a crit, that's going to be over 100 damage with median rolls, so cutting someone in half in a single round is more than possible. That's by far the best melee damage we've had from a Z fighter. You also got to cap off your cast modifier, unlike some Z fighters, so your sunbeams will cook better than just about anyone else's, even if you can't drop a whole spirit bomb with sunburst. Finally, unlike the other Z fighters, you have proficiency with armor and wear armor, so that's going to be 18 AC in plate mail or 23 after shield. For weaknesses, we put the tough feet on most other Z fighters, so you're going to have lower health, somewhere around 130, meaning you could get cooked pretty quickly. You've also got a ton of concentration spells, and one that bullies you out of casting other spells too. Finally, you're just lacking charisma. The holy solis get to be charming, but you have the big brain, which isn't bad, but not as regularly useful as charisma in my opinion. But that big intelligence lets you tell the future, and the future is looking bright. Well, no it isn't, but you're the best Z fighter we've ever built by far, so you could change the future if you want. Just make sure that you play it a little safe, otherwise you could end up bamboozled. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video, subscribe for more, we make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Black Manta from DC, Dominic Toretto from Fast and the Furious, Zangief from Street Fighter, or Link from Full Metal Alchemist, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.